Hi folks, Vipin here. Today we're going to talk about the 2008 recession. One of my students asked me about how the Lehman Brothers, the Lehman Brothers Bank, which happened to be one of the largest investment banks in the world, failed in 2008 and it led to the whole recession in 2008. Now the aftermath of that recession is still felt even in 2014. Uh, in fact, America has not yet recovered entirely from the 2008 recession. So let me tell you how the recession actually happened and who are the main culprits behind the whole thing. So let's get started. Firstly, remember the word that I have mentioned on top, debt securitization. Now debt securitization is a complicated process. I'll tell you about that in a few minutes, but keep that word in your head. Now the bank would go about giving a loan to people who fall in the subprime category. Remember that word, subprime category. What is meant by subprime? Now when I apply for a loan in a bank, the bank will do a credit review. A credit review means they will go through my uh, financial ability for repayment of that loan. That is, they'll check how much I'm earning, how many dependents I have, uh, if I have defaulted on any previous loan, do I have more loans now? All this is what they would go about checking. And if everything turns out to be a green light, the bank will end up giving me the loan and I can go about repaying this comfortably. Now, there are some people, especially in America, the African American community and the Hispanics, uh, who don't really qualify in the prime margin. They're called as subprime. The bank classifies them as subprime because they don't have the financial ability to repay a loan. Now, I'm not being racist when I say this, but that's a fact. Uh, the majority of uh, occupants in American prisons, the inmates, they're either from the African-American community or they are from the Hispanic community. The number of white people who happen to be there is quite less. Once again, I'm not being a racist, just go check the stats, you will know the truth. So, what would happen is the bank would be forced to give loans to these guys because if they rejected them previously, they would go about crying racism. So, the bank would be like, do I give them a loan or do I face a racism lawsuit? And a racism lawsuit is a very, very severe impact for the company's goodwill. So they were rather like uh, we will uh, uh, give them a loan rather than in fact face a lawsuit in the court. So they would end up giving a lot of loans to people who are in the subprime margin. And now they would do this to many, many people all over the country. They would give out home loans to as many people as possible. Remember here the home loans are the main culprit. The Home loans are the reason why the whole recession actually happened and particularly home loans giving uh, being given to the people who fall in the subprime margin. In fact, the 2008 recession was also known as the subprime crisis. So the bank would go about giving home loans to many others. I've chosen 10 people here in fact whom they've gone about giving the loan. And now let's do some math. 10 loans have been given each of rupees 1 lakh. Okay, so a grand total of 10 lakh has been given plus interest of 15%. Now to keep the calculation simple, I'm going to ignore the rate of interest. So I'm just going to say the bank will, re will recover 10 lakh rupees in 20 years from now. So you can imagine how long this is. Uh, home loans always have a very, very long maturity. In India, I think the maximum you can take would be uh, 20 years. So when it comes to 20 years for a home loan, uh, I would in fact go with the longest tenure. So I'm assuming all the others, the people who've taken the loan here as well, they would say to the bank that I'll repay the one lakh rupees in 20 years. So 10 people who have taken 10 lakhs in total are going to repay the bank in 20 years. You can imagine how long this period of time is, 2034. Uh, that's when the bank will actually recover this money. So this is a long period of time for the bank to wait. So what the bank is going to do is a little bit of magic. The loans are now going to be converted into bonds. 
Now what the bank is going to do here is there is a process where you convert an illiquid asset into a liquid asset. Remember there is a process called uh, there is a process where you convert a illiquid asset into a liquid asset and that in fact is known as debt securitization. A debt securitization is what you would do here. Now let's assume they convert it into a bond of rupees 10,000 each. Okay, and now the bank is going to sell 100 bonds of rupees 10,000 each to investors in the stock market. Now there will be lakhs of people all over America, all over the world, all, uh, all over the world in fact who would be interested to buy these bonds. So what will they do? They will sell these bonds to them. Now rather than waiting for 20 years to recover the loan, you have in fact recovered all your investment immediately. Now I'm giving a small example of 10,000 rupees for 100 bonds. They would do this by the billions. No jokes here, no exaggeration here. They would do this by the billions. So all the money which they were supposed to recover a couple of decades from now, they have recovered immediately. Now this is what is effectively going to happen. How will the bank repay the bondholders if I repay the bank first? Now I pay the equated monthly installments or the EMIs as you would call it. Uh, no, EMIs is not equal monthly installments, it is equated monthly installments. So I would repay the bank, the bank would repay the bondholders and so everyone is happy. And now let's get into the crisis when this would actually happen. Now let's say I stop repaying the bank. Okay, so what can be what can I give as the reason ha I lose my job and I decide to rob a store and I end up going into jail for that not that I'm not thought about it but yeah I've I decided to rob uh, rob someone and uh, now I'm in jail so the payment cannot happen when the payment cannot happen from my side the bank gets into a problem because they're unable to repay the bondholders in fact it's my money which a bank will keep from uh, which a, which the bank will keep into their account and a part of it they repay to the bondholders in one of my previous videos i talked about debentures and how debentures actually work so this is what the bank was forced to do now i'm not able to repay anything to the bank the bank gets into a bit of a financial difficulty because they're not able to get any money from me if they can't get any money from me they can't repay the bondholders and so this is what's going to happen. They need to recover the money from me. I took a home loan. I've given the home as a collateral to the bank. Or I've mortgaged the house to the bank. The bank will decide to sell the property. Now, what happened back then in 2008 was the real estate values fell. Let's say I have a home that is value is 1 lakh rupees, the same as the loan that I had taken. The market value would fall to say 70,000. Now when that happens, the bank gets into more problems. Even after selling the assets, they are not able to recover their investment. So what can they do? When they sold these bonds to the bondholders originally, the bonds were securitized as well. When I say securitized, the asset being converted into an uh, illiquid asset being converted to a liquid asset. They were able to make it possible and convince the bondholders to buy this by attaching collateral. The bank will tell them that buy these bonds if you're not able to get your money back, we will sell our assets and then repay your investment. So what, what's going to happen now? They can't recover money from me. The bank is forced to sell their property. So how will a bank function when it doesn't have any assets? If you look at the accounting concepts, assets is what generates revenue. When you don't have any assets at all, how are you going to generate any revenue? Over a course of time, the bank had to sell so many of their assets, the banks eventually had to shut down altogether. And when the whole financial system crumbles, the American economy in fact went into recession. You first had Lehman Brothers, the giant that actually fell, the big giant actually, there were a lot of smaller banks who actually failed. Uh, that really didn't have a major impact. But once Lehman Brothers actually failed, the entire country in fact went into recession and many other countries who were 
closely linked in terms of business with America, even they actually got into problems because of this. So in other words, it was in fact individuals who actually were the reason behind the crisis. They took loans which they couldn't repay. Now when they couldn't repay, the bank had to repay other individuals. And then you can see the whole series of chain reaction that actually happened there. And all because they gave loans to someone who couldn't really repay this originally. And when they were told they can't repay this original, they can't repay this, they in fact cried racism and the whole system actually fell down afterwards. This is what actually led to the 2008 recession. Banks shut down, companies which were attached to banks shut down, real estate organizations felt the, uh, felt the blow, individuals became homeless because of this, and all is in fact pretty much the summary of the 2008 recession. I hope you found this video informative. If you uh, like it, do go about sharing it and leave a comment in the section below if you have any queries. I'll get back to you immediately. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Bye.